conferences to inform you of the death of a young man who died in the early hours of Monday morning. Uh, a suppression order is going to be sought on that person's name because we have um, various identification processes that we need to do in respect to the murder and a number of other offences leading up to it. Um, we will look to lift that suppression order as soon as we possibly can. What I can tell you is that the victim was chased down by three males, fatally stabbed and stomped. Um, and we know the identity of two of those males. Uh, one of them is in custody and has been charged with murder. Investigations are continuing in respect to one who we don't know his identity. And the third male, we have to conduct investigations to see whether that person has any criminal culpability relating to this incident. So in other words, is the third person an offender or not? Um, since uh, this murder occurred, um, major crime detectives have been working with Operation Meld, and I believe you're all familiar with that operation, Eastern Adelaide CIB and Star Group, um, and for the last um, couple of days have been going flat out on this investigation, and 17 people are in custody for a variety of offences. I can tell you all of those people are aged between 18 and 25 years of age, and all males. Some of the suspects have been wanted for other offences uh, and most have been charged for weapons related offences at this stage. You will be aware that Operation Meld started in the middle of last year um, in response to um, ongoing tensions between rival African criminal groups. That investigation has been managed by Metropolitan Operations Service and I don't intend to talk about that operation today except insofar as it relates to our investigation. There has been ongoing tensions between two African gangs, a group called 051 and KBS, and we believe a number of those gang members and associates are responsible for the activities that we've seen on the weekend. As I say, there are lots of witnesses and thousands of hours of CCTV. I can take you through a chronology of events as to how things unfolded um, to give you a better understanding of what's happened. So on Friday evening, um, on two separate flights around about 9.30pm, one flight arriving from Sydney and one from Melbourne, six African males arrived and were collected by local gang members and taken to an undisclosed location. On Saturday, the person who we believe is responsible for the murder and inflicted the fatal stab wounds, together with some other gang members from uh, Adelaide, walked into the Mantra Hotel on High May Square. At about, um, at about 1.21 in the early hours of Monday morning, outside the Quest Apartments, a group of offenders assaulted and robbed a man and stole his phone. We know that there was five or six offenders and several were seen by witnesses running from the scene. At about 1.56, we received a call from South Australian Ambulance Service in respect to an African male who had been assaulted and robbed and was unconscious. And there was another male with him who, who had been assaulted. Again, similar types of offenders involved in that assault. At about two o'clock, there was a larger fray, um, or a fight if you like, in Sea of Furla Lane. The numbers are difficult to be certain of, but anywhere around 15 to 20 people, two rival groups, and I guess that could best be described as a knife fight. At 2.08, the deceased was seen running along North Terrace after leaving the laneway and he was fatally stabbed in North Terrace. Two of the people were actively involved in his murder and as I said, the third person stood back and watched. So we get to determine the role of that person. As you would expect, there was a massive police response to these events um, and at 2.21, um, a car was being broken into at Quest Apartments and police attended there. Seven South Australian people 
who are either KDS members or associates, were arrested for a variety of offences. Two of those were arrested for previous stabbing incidents for which they were wanted. One on warrants and three others for carrying weapons. At 4.20, uh, there was another vehicle stop in Pulteney Street for a vehicle believed to contain one of the suspects. And four Victorians and a South Australian person were arrested in that vehicle stop. All those arrested were in possession of weapons, with one of them also being charged uh, for carrying, oh sorry, one of them also being charged for unlawful possession of about $7,000 in cash. At 4.56, there was another vehicle stop of a suspect who was arrested for breach of bail. That person was a Victorian man. Throughout the day, um, as I say, there was a massive response which continued throughout the day um, and into the evening. And at about 5.25pm, um, a large police contingent, including Operation Meld, Major Crime, Eastern Adelaide, CIB and Star Group attended the airport where they were assisted by officers from the airport and four Victorians were arrested as they were about to leave South Australia. One of those has been charged with murder and all four of them have been charged with aggravated affray with two of the four also being charged um, with travelling under, uh, sorry, charged for travelling with false documents. Um, it's important that everybody remembers that these are violent young criminals who on this occasion happen to be African, but we've had this sort of offending with lots of other different people. And these young criminals are not truly representative of the wider African community. And I would ask that African community to get on board with the police and support the police in this investigation. A lot of the victims arising from their violence are people from within the African community. Um, so I encourage people within the African community who have information to contact the police to bring Crime Stoppers where they can remain anonymous. And if they're approached by police during the course of the investigation, um, to cooperate with us because it's important that these people are taken off our streets. Thank you. The four arrested at the airport, how close were they to getting onto the plane? Um, they'd um, passed through um, the security and were arrested inside. So they would have been gone very soon afterwards. This third offender that you're um, talking about, do we have any indication of where they might be? Not at this stage. Are there any concerns that any of this group did, did get on flights and make it back to Melbourne? Uh, we don't have any evidence to support that, but um, you know, people could have driven here as well. So um, this is going to be a really challenging investigation. You know, if you imagine 15 to 20 people in that laneway uh, that we have to follow up, and obviously some of those people were involved in the earlier offending, so there will be a massive amount of work to do on, on this investigation. Are you concerned that these groups in Adelaide and South Australia are linked to groups in, in Victoria where we've seen that um, similar rival youth games over the last few years? Uh, look, um, interstate has, the, has their own problems, um, and we have ours, but occasionally we do see this um, cross-pollination, um, whether it be for outlaw motorcycle gangs, organised crime, other criminals. People have relatives all over Australia, they have friends and associates, and people travel. Um, but if those Victorian offenders come to Adelaide, they should expect that they will be targeted, they will be arrested, and at every opportunity they'll be held in custody. So th this is really um, foolhardy behaviour in every respect. Everything they're doing is stupid. Um, they're going to end up being arrested. They're going to end up going to prison. And for what? That's is the victim suspect. From South Australia? Is the victim from South Australia? Uh, or are they no. Victorian? No, they are Victorian. Yep. That third suspect that we, just, uh, we were just speaking of, are they from SA? You mean the one who we don't know what yes. role played? Uh, that's I've got to confirm that. And is there any CCTV at all of the stabbing? There's a lot of CCTV. Um, there will be CCTV. I haven't gone through it all, but I know that there is a lot. And a lot of what I've told you today has been derived from CCTV. 
How many charges have been laid since Operation Mill began? Last oh, year? I couldn't tell you because we're not involved in Operation Mill, but I can tell you that the the work that they've done over the last twelve months um, has been a significant contributor to the success that we've had so far to date in getting on top of this quickly. Okay. They know a lot of these people. They've got excellent cooperation with their interstate counterparts, um, and we're well advanced in this investigation. In terms of the person that was robbed on Franklin Street, was that a person who was affiliated with these two groups, or are members of the general public at risk at the moment? I'd have to double check that, but I can tell you that the majority of the violence between these people is amongst themselves. Um, most of it has been between them, and that's not to say something can't happen to somebody outside that gang environment, but um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of effort going into make sure that we can keep the community safe. It was a swift response from the police, including Star Group officers. Is that because police have a rapid response around this kind of activity at the moment? Uh, obviously, Operation Mild is ongoing, and so there's obviously a lot of presence. There's a lot of strategy and tactics going to that. Um, that's a very good operation, and they're working closely with Star Group. So it was very easy very easy for us to get a really quick response for support. How long has the victim been here in Adelaide? Was he just visiting on holidays or? Uh, no, I couldn't tell you that. Does the involvement of youths from Victoria indicate that these gangs may be bigger and better organised than um, previously thought? Um, certainly for us, the evidence doesn't suggest that. I mean, this is not a new phenomenon. We've had, um, in the past, we've had a number of street gangs here before and street gangs typically come and go and I suspect it will be similar with this. Do you have any indication on how many people are affiliated here in SA? Uh, that's probably a question for those people running Operation Mill. Just on that, is the second murder suspect today from SA? Uh, I'll double check for that. Do you know why these people flew in from Sydney and Melbourne? Do you believe it was because of this planned uh, alleged attack? Until we've done the investigation, we can't be, can't be sure of whether they came for that purpose or whether they came for a legitimate purpose and this has become an inc incidental matter to it, although it's obviously an ex escalation. Do you believe they have the murder weapon? Uh, we're not sure yet. Describe the nationality as African. Can you confirm is it Sudanese <coughs> as it's been widely reported? I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't want to narrow it down to any narrower than that. I think that would be grossly unfair of me because I don't really know. Um, and there's a lot of African nationalities. The Premier flagged potentially looking at new laws to give police more power when it comes to these types of gangs, maybe in the same way as the powers you have against organised crime, organise that, well, criminal organisations. Is that something you'd like to see? Oh, that, that's something that I'm probably not the right person to talk to you about that. The two at the airport, they were charged with travelling under um, a false name. How were they doing that with fake licences? Or They basically had um, documentation of somebody that looked extremely similar <coughs> to them. And the likelihood is they wouldn't have been detected. Is there any more information on the murder weapon? Uh, no. It's still not found yet? Uh, we've got a lot of knives. Um, it's a matter of what, what knife is related to the murder. Do you have a genuine fear that there could be retribution on the back of this, given that it's two gangs that are clearly at high tensions at the moment now that someone's died? Is that something police are concerned about? That's something that Operation Mill will obviously give regard to. But again, this is not dissimilar to what we're seeing with our bikey gangs over time. Um, and um, tensions rise, tensions subside, um, and gang members come and go. And I suspect that will be the case with these people. In the short term, there is a very, very significant response in terms of Operation Milk and in terms of the task of force that we're forming to investigate this. I've no doubt we'll get on top of it quickly and there will be more arrests. How many knives were seized? Uh, I couldn't tell you that. I suppose what can be done to stop this ongoing you know, violence? Um, Again, the ongoing violence between the groups is probably something for the people running Operation Build to talk about, but there's lots of strategies that have worked in the past with gangs. Um, we've had lots of street gangs in the late 2000s and through um, from probably 2005 for about five years. 
um, the majority of those no longer exist, so gangs will come and go, and a, a strong and consistent law enforcement action is one part of it, and working with the community and to try to eradicate gangs also works. Is that task force being increased? Are there more officers being put on that case? Oh, those discussions will be had by people other than me, but we'll, um, we're collating all the information and evidence that's been obtained in the last couple of days, and we're assessing our resource needs at the moment, but I can say that we will get whatever resources we need to investigate the murder and those incidents leading up to it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.